Want to know how Iran built its own fighter jet? How Azeroksh took off into Iran's proud blue sky? Was it really just an F-5 or something more? Stick around, I'm going to show you what most missed. The story starts during wartime, when things were really bad. Planes were aging, spare parts gone, sanctions everywhere biting hard. But a group of Iranian engineers said, we'll build one. That's when Azeroksh became the spark of real hope. The first prototype looked like the F-5 Tiger, true. Same body frame, but upgraded engines and better radar system. Even the nose got stretched longer to fit new tech. They said it may look old, but inside it's ours. The Air Force commander, Mansour Satari, believed in self-reliance. He said, let's stop waiting, let's make our own wings. Engineers work day and night, no breaks, just belief. And finally, in 97, Azeroksh left the runway. That test flight was a win. People cheered with pride. It dropped bombs, flew clean, joined in military drills. Iran's leader watched it live and praised the team. Azeroksh became a national symbol of power. But yeah, mass production didn't quite go as planned. They signed contracts aimed for 30 jets. Sounds ambitious, right? In the end, maybe six or seven were finished. Technology was tough, money was short, sanctions never stopped. Later, they introduced an improved version called Psyche. Twin vertical stabilizers, better control, sleeker design overall. It was faster, more stable during hard maneuvers too. But like Azeroksh, it never reached full-scale production. Let's talk specs. No hype, just what's real and known. It had two engines, likely J85s or upgraded versions. Top speed estimated at about Mach 1.5 max. Its range? Around a thousand kilometers, not exactly long haul. What weapons? Sidewinder missiles, laser-guided Iranian bombs, also carried unguided rockets and dual 20mm cannons. Radar was a hybrid, based on Russian but localized. Great for close air support, not long-range air dominance. One key point, it was still a light tactical jet. It launched fast, flew agile, but lacked endurance in combat. No in-flight refueling meant regional ops only, no deep strike. That limited its strategic role beyond local missions. But still, it wasn't built to conquer, it was built to inspire. On TV, it showed often, people cheered like it was gold. Even the name meant lightning, sharp and symbolic, powerful in meaning, even if limited in firepower. Later, Psyche and Kosar joined the same aircraft family. Kosar was more for training, but its systems upgraded. Psyche had twin tails, styled like a mini F-18. All of them were born from that same F-5 legacy. So why doesn't Iran have strong fighter jets today? Because building a jet is insanely harder than missiles. Engines, radar, flight control, it's not one industry, it's many. Missiles are simpler, cheaper, and deliver faster deterrence value. Iran focused its doctrine on indirect, asymmetric defense models. Instead of dogfights, it relied on long-range missile power. Missiles that can threaten enemy bases from hundreds away. That's why its missile force grew, not the Air Force. Azerosh might not win a war, but it matters. It says, even with little, we can still build. Iran didn't waste time waiting, it reworked what it had, turned an old F-5 into a brand new warbird. Nowadays, you won't see Azerox flying every day, but back then, it was a card Iran proudly played. People wondered, what has Iran built now? Even enemies took notice and marked it on maps. More importantly, it gave Iranian engineers hands-on experience. That know-how got passed to later projects with ease, from drones to missiles and even future manned jets. Azeroksh was a lab in disguise, a flying classroom. Even if it never sees combat, it taught lessons. A test bed for defense science and national resilience. These kinds of projects pushed Iran forward inch by inch. They built without Western help, and that's a big deal. Some said it's just an F-5 copy, not original. 
Sure, it started from that, but then came reverse engineering. Iran understood it, reshaped it, improved parts piece by piece. That's not copying, that's how you learn and own it. Now younger engineers dream of fifth generation stealth jets. But remember, back then, even this was a leap. Without projects like Azerox, they'd still be guessing basics. It's the first step, not the finish line at all. At military parades, three Azerox jets would always perform. People clapped, kids dreamed, even if they weren't combat ready. That sight mattered. It left hope in the national sky, and that hope still fuels the dreams of tomorrow. Few know how much Azerox shaped Iran's drone industry. That design and build mindset flowed straight into UAVs. Same teams built Shahed and other air systems later. From jet pilots to drone makers, it's all connected. Azerox wasn't just tech, it was a university in disguise. Young minds learned by doing, not by reading manuals. No foreign instructors, just hands-on trial and error. That's how a generation of defense engineers was born. Other countries need billions to start fighter development, but Iran did it on scraps, sanctions, and sheer will. They bought F-5s, but Iran made Azerox out of them. And that's a difference many still underestimate today. Maybe Azerox isn't flying anymore, and that's okay, because its mission wasn't only air, it was mindset. It gave experience, belief, and a roadmap to follow. No military tech is ever useless if it teaches. So now ask yourself something, really ask it deeply. If Iran built a fighter jet from almost nothing, what could you build, starting from your own zero? Hard? Sure, but not impossible. Azerox proved that already.